munchkins and beers like it's me munchie welcome back to the channel and to another rescue intake story i'm just kind of knocking them out of the ballpark lately isn't that great this is what you guys want right i love sharing with you the adventures of taking in animals that are in need of a home here at munchie's place for homeless pets which is our rescue in washington state that's run by myself and volunteers so thank you guys for being here there's two types of rescues there's those willingly surrender to the rescue and those that we rescue on places like craigslist offer up and Facebook where Facebook and OfferUp are not supposed to be housing any sort of animals but today this hamster comes from OfferUp and I think the reason why they're doing that is because Craigslist even though they have a space for pets their bots are just flagging people rehoming animals it's not like they're breeders but people are noticing that oh well they're just flagging my ads there's nowhere for me to like post this animal that needs to go so I'm just gonna post it on places that don't allow it and hope that someone takes it and there has been people in our community that do rescue these guys but I do want to make a note here because this has become super super frustrating and very apparent that people want to play rescue but they don't have the funds and they don't have the means to hold on to the animal for a long period of time until that animal is found a safe home and environment. People are trying to go out there rescue the animal and say oh well I don't intend to keep it and I didn't want to keep it past a couple days so could you take it or could another rescue take it or things like that. One please guys never do that to a rescue. They already are under tremendous amounts of stress and pressure. And if they don't have room, you're basically pressuring them that you're just gonna abandon it and or that they're a terrible rescue, which has happened in the community recently. We've had several people try to surrender animals that they should probably never have rescued in the first place if they're not intending to take care of that long period of time. That's called flipping. Please do not do that, especially when an animal needs an environment upgrade immediately and you're not able to take care of it, even though you know the enclosure of which it's in right now is bad for it. If they medically need assistance and you're not prepared to take on that responsibility, you are putting the animal back in the same situation as the situation you got it from. Please do not do that, all right? Work with the rescue beforehand. Don't assume that a rescue is going to take your responsibility off of your hands. That is not all right, all right? I'm gonna say this right now, nip it in the butt. Do not play rescue and then expect us to take in that rescue immediately after you do that. We rescue on these sites and we do that when we have the available to and or people just bring it to our attention. Sometimes we can, sometimes we cannot. We are only human. We have our volunteers down this year compared to previous years. So please understand we're not going to be able to take in all animals and help all animals. But if you want to network for the animal, which means that you are going to reach out on behalf of that animal, then just network for that animal in your community and see if there's anybody who can take it. Basically, you are just being the messenger and passing around the information of this animal needs help. So please thank about that before going out and playing rescue. If you have the funds, great. If you have the resources, great. If you have the time and commitment for the animal, you're doing it right, all right? I love to see people do it right. When you do it wrong, it puts the whole situation upside down. You flip it upside down and it becomes a mess. Anyways, this animal that is not currently inside of this enclosure, which um, sometimes I will show you when they are in the enclosure and sometimes I'll show you when they're not. We've already had animals inside of this enclosure and I've already personally reviewed this enclosure. So I, this time, do not have the guy inside of here. Plus, he was not okay to be inside of here. So we took him out and placed him in something much bigger, which is a 50 gallon sterile like Bing Cage. But his name, we've dubbed him Littlefoot because he is super small and they misidentified him as a female. It's actually a male. <laughs> but I think the pet store misidentified them, which I do want to bring up another point. Even though there are some really good pet store workers that can easily identify animals, a lot of people are just hired as cashiers at these places and they don't learn about genetics or the genders or things like that. But they're expected to handle, sell, and hold these animals for you guys of which you're inquiring about. So if they're there's ever a pet store out there that has provided you with misinformation, go back to that store and let the leader on duty know, especially the animal leader on duty, know that they provided false information because that will save someone else's heartache in the future. If they were mistold information or they were misguided some way, or they said, hey, these are both girls when they're actually not. It is the animal leader's responsibility to correctly gender them and to correctly make sure their staff is monitoring them and are not mixing the genders up. Moving on forward, this guy was on offer up. It says hamster and cage here. It says, we've decided a hamster isn't the right fit for our family. We've not had her for too long. She's cute and easy to care for and needs an older child
child or adult who will be gentle with her as she'll bite if she feels threatened. You can have her cage, but it does feel a bit small and you might consider getting her a larger one. So this family just did not want to upgrade, did not want to spend the time to adjust to this little hamster and they knew what they were doing was not right but they just decided to give up. It sounds brutally honest, but yeah, they just they just gave up. And the reason why is because it was nippy. It was a nippy little hamster that just could not settle. And because they forced it inside of this, thinking that this was correct, and this is the all living things line at PetSmart that I have reviewed several times, this is not adequate. This is too small. 450 plus square inches of floor space is needed. This, I forgot to measure it, and I just misplaced my measuring tape. Yet again, I don't know where I keep putting this bloody measuring tape, but it's somewhere here in my room. It's it's too small. It's like a shoebox size. You don't have a lot of enrichment. These guys travel five to 10 miles a night in the wild, but on average five miles on their wheels and they constantly need to go. This doesn't have enough of a burrow space for them. The wheel is too small at 6.5 when a searing hamster can grow very long in length and their spine will begin to curve causing pain or arthritis and 10 to 12 inches is recommended for Syrians. This guy is indeed a Syrian, but he's a very, very young Syrian. So we later found out during our discussion that they only had the hamster for a month. It takes three to four months for a cat or dog to get used to their home. Think about a hamster. How often were you interacting with the hamster? Were you just discouraged because you handled them incorrectly and they bit? and you just couldn't deal with them anymore. It happens so often, and I feel like they should take responsibility for what they decide to do, but they also did take responsibility and say, hey, it's not the right fit, and we think you guys need to increase the size of the enclosure. But at the same time, it was just a very not great situation, so this is kind of like a middle ground of like, they unintentionally didn't mean to do this, but they did, but they had good intentions. It's not something that is like super, super bad because the enclosure itself is clean. They did replace the wheel they came with with a larger wheel, but it's not by much. They were just misguided. That's what I'm getting the sense of here. They claimed he bit. My transporter said that he bit, but he has not bit me yet. <laughs> So um, I guess I just have a way with hamsters. <laughs> but yeah, at the end of the day, they just decided that there's this species is not right for them. But honestly, I feel like this hamster was not right for them and they expected a whole lot more and they did not further look into doing research because when you take a small animal from a very lackluster, not so great environment and placing them in a more open space, bigger and more bedding and bigger size wheel, they will tend to relax and settle. For young hamsters, they are very high energy, including males. But males will taper off very quickly, whereas females, they just, they have hormones. It just bounces off the walls constantly for the species. And because they're Syrian hamsters, it's like, we always try to encourage people to look into males, but this guy was a male, but he's just, he's kind of a handful. <laughs> but he's absolutely super small. And so we're gonna try to buff him up. We assume he is around three months going into his four month mark because he's just way too small of a hamster right now. And he's got a very narrow face. When I see narrow face Syrian hamsters, I get very, very worried because a lot of the times it's really bad genetics. They don't look right, they look really thin. However, males tend to be a little bit thinner than females and females tend to be a lot heavier than males. Males just have the very long lengthy look and he's got some some, some big balls, all right? He's, he's got some very big balls. <laughs> Little foot we named just because of his size and because of his personality and everything. And he's been just a wonderful little guy at the rescue. He has claimed his hide and he's living inside of it. And it's a ceramic bunny hide that we actually used to have for Carlos when Carlos was still alive. Hashtag rest in peace, Carlos. Anyways, but yeah, he's doing very well at the rescue. This is just kind of an easy intake. People just realized they messed up and were rehoming him and they were rehoming him on a platform that wasn't great, a cage that was not so great, but it's not bad. So I'll just open up the enclosure and show you exactly what they kept him in so you guys can see. This right here, oh yeah, that's right. They came with a bag, so we'll investigate, but this might be the Power of Five lab block right here. The tubes inside of here, they are way too small of an opening. So this is where hamsters tend to die, especially Syrian hamsters, because this opening is way too small and they get stuck and they can't like turn around inside the tunnel. It's this kills them. Plus this is plastic and when it comes to this type of durability, it breaks very easily and it gets dirty very easily. So this just ends up in our landfills. This is a complete waste and pet stores need to do better with this type of stuff. Stop producing stuff like this. Start producing more woods and cardboard, all right? 
And then of course we got the wheel here. We also got a new, is it a new water bottle? No, the water bottle came with a cage, but I don't remember the specific water bottle. But they do have an eight ounce water bottle that we can reuse at the rescue. We always tend to have water bottles just not work. The bedding depth in here, I can see it's around an inch or not even an inch. So they use bedding for keeping clean, so ammonia. It will keep the smell down for their urine. And it also provides them with temperature. They're burrow animals. You provide them with a lot of bedding. Don't, don't do stuff like this. And companies, they don't want to provide a whole lot of pan depth. And I find that to be very ridiculous. It's like, we spend so much at the rescue on bedding. It's really ridiculous. But we try to provide them with at least four to five inches of bedding. Sometimes we can't and three inches is somewhat okay. But in personal care for you guys out there, you should be providing a whole lot more because in the wild, they are underground about two feet and they are mostly active above surface at night. But when it comes to maintaining a healthy hamster, lots of bedding is definitely required and enrichment. This this has no enrichment and this has no chew toys. Chew toys are crucial for hamsters. Otherwise their incisors are constantly growing and can damage the roof of their mouth. They can curl, they can impact. They need to have something to chew on. Seed mixes are really good because that also keeps their teeth down, but wood chew toys is required. And it looks like they took out the stand. I don't know if we got the stand in the bag or not so give me one second this is the wheel now this is a very sturdy wheel it's not an acrylic wheel but it's a different type of material plastic and i do like the way that it's made yeah this we can't even use it's 6.5 we don't like them they're too small we also have a little log hide but it's not made out of wood it's made out of a different rubbery plastic material this is good even though the opening might not be super big a Syrian hamster can fit comfortably inside plus it's an open bottom so they can't get stuck when searching for hamster hides make sure that it has an open bottom because if they get stuck in it they will panic they can die of stress so please just be aware oh uh, menu oh gosh menu changed menu is a very low brand so please never feed this to your hamsters this we just do not recommend at all it is not good food but this is what he was being fed and as you can see inside of there there's not a whole lot of variety but there's a lot of fiber pellets. Now they don't need all that much fiber and fiber, let's see how much fiber, 13%. So I believe that's on the higher end. They really don't need 13%, especially when protein is at 13%, which they need well above that, 18 to 20. And if they're younger than that, 20 to 22. But they do also have, which it looks like they fed them the most of, the Power of Five Hamster Lab Block. Now this for the first ingredient is Timothy Hay. I really don't like that. That's not really good protein uh, lab block block and they've also decreased the protein i remember i think it was at 18 and then it just decreased to 15. this is 15 now don't buy it it's not good and oh yep it's their own brand that they are rebranding and oh this is sad they purchased the smallest one i highly encourage if you guys have hamsters or are getting into hamsters just go with the biggest bag all the time don't don't waste your money on smaller bags all the time bigger bags but yeah they still have bedding left inside here and this is what i hate it's just like use use it all you have so much room to use it all. They probably don't because it goes outside of the wire enclosure, but this is so needed for a hamster. Remember, you're doing this for your animal, not for you, all right? Just don't restrict the animal of what it needs because that's what you want. If you wanted it to be that way, don't even have the animal. Do not try to force the animal to be in your lifestyle. You gotta make sure you and your animal's lifestyles click. Thank you guys for watching today's video. And if you liked it, show support by leaving a comment and liking the video, subscribing if you're new here and would like to become part of our Munchkin family and to hear more stories from us in the future. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic, wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you around in the next video. Oh, before I go, I found a mini Timothy Hay bale right here. This isn't a salt lick. At least I don't think so, right? It's not really needed. It's a all natural mini Timothy Hay bale but hamsters, they just like chewing on hay for their teeth and as a nesting material. It's not really a part of their diet. I wanted to say that.